BoxingVoice.com. We are here with ESPN's own Bernardo Osuna uh, after the Billy Dib Evgeny Gradovich fight. Bernardo, tell us your thoughts on this fight tonight. That was a great fight. I mean, to get a guy coming in in his 16th fight, late notice uh, in, in Evgeny, and to be able to never go 10 rounds in his career and to pull it out down the stretch, I thought was amazing. You know, Billy Dib proved that he's watchable once again. So I think even though he lost his title, Billy Dib once again, you know, earned himself a, an opportunity to, whether it's a rematch against Gradovich or, or another opportunity uh, on a network. I think, you know, he didn't come out with the victory, but I think he earned something very important, which is fight fans' respect. Now, talk about ESPN's program. I mean, the past two weeks, we've had world championship caliber fights. I mean, last year, it wasn't the greatest of years, but this year, it's starting out strong. You know what? I think it, it all works out. It's cyclical, you know? It's, you know, how do you get Lamont Peterson on a card? You know, it, it he is suspended for PED use or testosterone use. Next thing you know, he needs to come back in, in a fight. You know, none of the networks want want to touch him, and, and ESPN gets it, you know? Same thing with Billy Dibb. You know, how do you get him on your air, you know? It, he's a comeback fight type deal. He does it on, on ESPN's Friday Night Fights. It's, it's kind of luck of the draw, but even before then, I mean, we started off our year really well with, with uh, good fights, and I think it's just week after week the promoters have been giving us good product, and we've been able to put it on the air for our fans, and I think, you know, it really shows what good matchmaking does as opposed to guys who protect their fighters, and, it's it, you know, you're not seeing showcase fights this season on Friday Night Fights. And I, I think for fans and for the media alike, we love that. Uh, switching gears a little bit, you talked about programming. I mean, we, we can't talk about programming without talking about Mayweather's big move. Six fights, 30 months, showtime. I mean, what impact do you think that has on the sport? And do you see Floyd fighting six times in 30 months? I don't see Floyd fighting six times in 30 months. And that's a big question. I mean, will Showtime get their money's worth? That's that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Uh, you know, Canelo's off the pay-per-view. They did get Abner Mates against Ponce de Leon, but that's not the big name that's going to bring in those extra two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 uh, buys for a pay-per-view. So we'll see how it works out. I mean, there's no doubt that Floyd's going to go over a million regardless. I mean, that. so if that's the target, really the question here is what's the target number where they make a profit on this. I think in terms of media, in terms of uh, exposure, in terms of a big you know, punch to the gut, I think it's there for HBO, I mean, for, for Showtime, what they did in, in this case. Um, but I mean, long term, will they recoup what money they've put into it? And more importantly, I mean, any time that a fighter's gotten a big deal, a guaranteed deal. We've seen bad fights. You know, we saw it with Roy Jones Jr., saw it with Prince Nassim Ahmed. So uh, if he's going to give us two good fights out of the six or whatever it is, is it worth it? You know, I think people want to see him in there with the big names. You know, the Matt Pacquiao fight's never going to happen. That's fine. But is he going to fight Canelo? Is he, is he going to fight Trout? Is he going to fight, you know, the guys who are worth it? People want to see Devin Alexander fight? Come on, that was like the worst thing that ever happened to Twitter when he when he press saying, hey, you know what? I want Devin Alexander. Like, what? Are you serious? So, I mean, if we get legit fights, whether it's three, four, five, six from Floyd, I think that's fine. But if not, then it's more of the same. And instead of guys like Adrian Broner or Canelo cashing in on another guaranteed deal, he's going to, you know, close doors because, you know, finally networks are going to realize, you know what? Go fight to fight with the guy. And, and if he gives you a good fight, then he gets paid. If not, it's not, it's not really a good deal. Now, speaking of Canelo Trout, I mean, Canelo pretty much shocked, shocked media, shocked everyone taking this fight. I mean, he didn't have to take this fight. He could have fought an Angulo. He could have fought anyone at 154 pounds. But he went to the guy who's probably the consensus number one or number two guy now that he beat Miguel Cotto. I mean, how do you see that fight playing out? And what's your opinion on Canelo? I mean, is he the goods? This fight will prove whether he is or not. I mean, the, the guy has one less fight than Floyd Mayweather, and, and he's under 23 years old. I mean, the guy, uh, you know, there's, there's no doubt that he's been out there and, and didn't have an amateur career really to, to speak of, so he's, he's learning on the job. But ultimately, it's what have you done for me lately. And this is a type of fight that legitimizes Canelo, even if he loses, if he has a good demonstration, if he goes out there and makes a good account of himself, then he'll be fine moving forward. If he doesn't, then he will have been exposed, you know. And you look at how Cotto looked against Mayweather, probably Mayweather's toughest fight since Jose Luis Castillo years ago. And then you see what, you know, Trout was able to do to Miguel Cotto. You know, Styles make fights and whatnot, but you know what? Anytime a legendary, you know, a legendary Mexican fighter has gone on to fight a slick boxer, be it Julio Cesar Chavez against Pernell Whitaker, anytime that's happened, 
it's tough for the guy. And I talked to Julio Cesar Chavez because I do all those golpes with him, and he said, you know what, that's the one danger that he's facing here. If, if you know, he, he fought per, uh, Pernell Whitaker, he fought Meldrick Taylor, and those are the guys that give Mexican brawlers trouble. So when you've been hand-fed, guys who come right at you, all of a sudden the guy's slick and, and he's got angles and, and he's not really worried about making a, a good fight or a brawl. He's worried about winning. That could be frustrating for Canelo. Now, ESPN and HBO have this partnership going on right now, and you guys recently aired Pacquiao Marquez 4. Uh, they're probably going to fight again. Um, seems like it, even though Marquez is saying you know he might not fight Pacquiao. Uh, when that fight comes in, I mean, what do you expect Pacquiao to be in that fifth fight? I mean, he got knocked out cold. I don't know what to expect. I mean, it's all, to me, more than physical, it's psychological. What Manny Pacquiao do we get? You know, if, if he comes back and he's, and he's at 100%, working in the gym, listening to Freddie Roach, you know, not, if, if he's running the camp, then you may be able to expect more of the same in, in, in the fifth fight. If Freddie's running the camp and, and Manny's, you know, listening to Freddie and doing what he needs to do, then he can get back to, to top level. But, I mean, guys who get knocked out cold like that usually don't come back to be the same guy they were before that. And it's not a physical thing. It's a psychological thing that happens to a fighter. You know, Mike Tyson was never the same after getting knocked out by Buster Douglas. Not because physically he wasn't the same guy, but psychologically somebody had finally stood up to the bully. And this happened with, with Manny Pacquiao. Finally somebody you know, did to him what he's used to doing to others, and now how does he react to that? Now, before I let you go, because we're all fight fans, that's why we're here, what one fight would you want to see? I'd love to see um, Abner Mares take on Nonito Doner. I mean, that's, you know, that's the fight that really is out there that needs to be made, and it should be made. I mean, I, I'm used to guys, you know, the Mayweather's Pacquiao's not, not happening, you know, the, you know, the, the Lennox Lewis and, and uh, you know, Mike Tyson happening five years after it should have happened. But you know what? This is a fight that, you know, usually happens at the lower weight classes. I know that the biggest problem in boxing is the promoters are warring, the networks are warring, the breweries are warring. So it's like you, you it's so polarizing and boxing can ill afford to be polarized. I mean, it's such a niche sport as it is. We need to get together, be able to make these big fights and, and put all this pettiness behind us. But if I had one chance to make a fight right now, it would be Mares against Nonito Donaire. I know I said that was my last question, but I lied. Uh, <laughs> I do that all I, the time. I, I, I want to know, I mean, does this fight fall into that Mayweather Pacquiao? Is We're not going to see these two in their prime ever fight each other. Yeah, it does. It falls exactly in that line. I mean, it's, it's sad, but... Uh, everyone thinks Mayweather Pacquiao, and I think actually the Mares Donaire fight is a much better fight. I mean, because at the end of the day, what makes Pacquiao Mayweather never happening worse is that 80% of the people thought Mayweather could win that fight. So it's inexplicable that, you know, even 50 Cent said that today on Friday Night Fights. He says, you know, he's going to make 200 grand, I mean, 200 million with, with the Showtime deal fighting six times. He could have made half of that or more fighting one time against Manny Pacquiao, yet he didn't want to do it because he doesn't want to risk his undefeated record, or he always came up with something different. It's drug testing, boom, and he says, I'll do it. Then it's like, I don't want to give you 50-50, which they both deserved. I want to give you X amount of dollars. It's like, it was always one excuse after another. So, uh, you know, I think that's what makes that fight, you know, sad that it didn't happen. But, you know, Mares Donaire, both guys can make a ton of money. Both guys deserve it. The 122-pounders, 126-pounders never get this big money, big shots. You know, we haven't seen, you know, uh, legit, you know, big-time fights since maybe, you know, all those, uh, the trilogies, you know, Barrera, Morales, Pacquiao, all those guys going at it. So it's like we need that. Boxing needs that, especially for the, the, the guys who really have no chance to make good money other than fighting each other. Well, there you have it, Bernardo Sullivan holding no punches. <laughs> Boxingvoice.com.